Hi guys, this is Cindy over Paper Old and New. Um, I was coming to you to do some more in our altered books. So um, as I have repeated in the past, I am an assembly line worker to some extent, uh, very process oriented. So I have multiple um, altered books in progress as far as getting them prepped to be uh, later decorated. So, um, as a matter of fact, I have six, I have three sitting waiting for pages to be torn out. Um, plus one upstairs by the TV that I've already started on. Um, I have six sitting off to the side that are, have all the pages torn out. They're waiting for, to be glued. Um, and then I have three in the process of being glued, although one of them is finished and I actually started decorating a page in it. This is going to be a beach theme one, and we're going to do some decorating in this one today, but I wanted to show you my gluing process. In the last video that you saw, you saw how I tore the pages out of two different kinds of books, ones with um, glued in signature page groups and ones with just glued in pages that you tear out. This one is a glued in signature page group book, um, and what I've been doing is I started in the back and I glued the pages together in pairs, um, four groups, so four pairs. I believe I glued, no I didn't, okay, the fly paper and then a page. So I have these to do something with, I don't know yet. Um, I think I'm gonna glue them together, but I'm not absolutely positive yet. Um, but I glued these together in pairs. So this is a pair of pages glued together, this is a pair of pages glued together, this is a pair, and this is a pair. The other thing I made sure I did was when I count these off, I look for the center of the signature to glue together. Um, that way I don't have to worry about, because the center of the signature is where all that tattered mess is that you usually hide in a pocket when you glue two pages together to make a pocket. I don't have to worry about finding that and hiding it now. It's hidden. It's all that is hidden in my glue together. So this one was under a book and in the process of drying. I don't know if they're totally dry yet. So I don't know if I want to, well, actually I can do a few because I have some wax paper that's going to come out of this book. Actually, you guys give me just a second. All right. Sorry about that, guys. I lost track of my wax paper. All right, so what I do basically is, and we'll do a couple, I'll do a set and then um, I will, we'll go decorate the other book. So basically what I do is I go in here and see this, this is what I was talking about with the torn. When I was first getting started with this, I wasn't watching what I was doing. Oh no, I did. Okay, so see this with the torn down the middle, that was the center of the signature and you can see it almost looks like stitching when you tear it out. And um, I put a generous amount of glue in there to seep down into those holes to help, I'm hoping to help with uh, supporting the um, spine and stuff so the stuff doesn't start falling out on me later. So I'm gonna clip those together and we're gonna go toward the back of this one. Make sure I've got the right amount of, cause that's gonna get glued to that. That gets glued to that. These two get glued together and that one gets glued to that one. So let's put, I get the feeling that because I didn't clip these properly, I'm going to end up with some spare pages or something down the road and have to figure out at the end, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. Okay. So what I do is we take the, like I said before, I watched, um, lots of different altered book videos. I watched people do it for art purposes. Um, there are some ladies out there that are making, that make altered books as an art form and they are absolutely gorgeous. Um, they're mixed, uh, mixed media, um, and they like small books with a small amount of pages. They like sewn in signatures and they do what I did for these books where you go to the center of the signature and you pull out pairs of pages at a time. Okay. And they get their books down to being like, uh, once they've glued all the pages together, like I'm doing, and sometimes they glue them down, um, uh, they glue three or four pages together to make almost like canvas boards to work on, uh, which is, you know, a cool idea for an art project. 
uh, and they only want like maybe eight spreads in the whole book. So a spread, a two page spread. And um, so I watched them make theirs, uh, make their, their boards and their books uh, support uh, a lot of uh, weight. Uh, they talked about the strength of the spines and you know, all of this stuff. You have to be careful doing this from the front with the paper clips in there, but to get all that in there. And then I take my glue paste out and I have some extra torn pieces that I use just to, um, while it dries, when it's pressed down, while it's drying, to just kind of be in between. And then we'll take this one and we'll open this up. Now, again, like I said, this is the signature and you can see there's some tears in there. So I'm gonna have to be careful. I don't want it to glue to the page behind it, but I do want them to glue together because that will kind of repair that to some extent. So anyway, so I watched um, these ladies that make these as an art form and they do an amazing job. And they, I, I watched them do their uh, prep work and stuff for how they get a book started for what they're gonna do. And then I watched um, people you, who do them as junk journals and I took, you know, stock of what they said in how they process books. And then I also watched, um, I think I mentioned this in a previous video, uh, I watched Gail Agostinelli uh, doing a altered book from like, I don't know, a couple years back. And she spoke about how she was using, I want to say she said the craft arena method. I don't know if I'm saying that right or not. But then, um, so I looked up craft arena and I went over and I watched her make them. And that's where I got the idea for, she glues on all of her altered books, uh, her altered book junk journal things. She glues two pages together for strength. And then she decorates on top. So she doesn't necessarily, unless she's going to make a, um, unless she's going to make full page pockets, sometimes she will um, take two of her boards and glue them together only at the edges and make a full page pocket. But for any other sized pocket, she generally will take the, uh, take whatever decorative paper she's using and make the pockets on top of the pages she's glued together. I'll have to link, I'll have to find her video and link it so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, and there are a couple of videos. She uh, goes through a process. And um, like I said, I took all of this information I found and I decided to kind of work with it and see what I came up with and how I liked it. Because when I was doing my first altered book, I, I had problems with like taking a single page and making a pocket against another single page, like using this page and this page and making it a pocket. I had problems with the individual pages for the particular book I was using pairing. So they weren't very sturdy pages. And maybe that's something you have to look out for if you're going to do an altered book like that. Um, but in that particular book, they weren't. And so I was like, how can I make sure that my pages are going to hold together? That is not a straight edge, we're gonna fold that. And so I went, I just went looking to see what other people were doing and I came up, I saw these methods and I thought maybe I could combine them. Excuse me, sorry. Um, combine them a little bit and see what I come up with. So now having said all that, um, I glue these pages together in pairs and then um, I do like four, usually I do like four at a time and I, I'll do uh, four in the back. And then when those dry, I'll flip it over into four in the front and I kind of work back and forth uh, because that's another one. Uh, a lot of people recommended that you don't, um, you don't just open the book to the front and start working backwards or, or, or like you would read it. I don't want to say backwards because technically that's front to back is the way you're supposed to read a book, right? Um, so they said it, it has a tendency to alter the way the spine lays um, once you've torn pages out and uh, it can affect the the end product as far as how well it closes or 
um, if it falls apart. It just affects the structure of the spine is what I heard from several people. And then there are other people that seem to do it that way and it works fine for them. I, you know, they, they start at the front, they tear out uh, a few groups of pages and then they start working on the pages that they've torn out. And then once they get to a point where they need to tear more pages, they just tear more pages and keep working. So, um, you know, oh, there's a spot that's not stuck. Right in there. Let's get some glue in between there. And then I lost it again. I need a box of shop rags down here because I keep losing my shop rag. So finger it is. And then I have nowhere to wipe it because I can't find my shop rag. Okay, so let's take this off of here and put this last piece of, wow, that one really didn't tear well. Put this last piece of wax paper in here. And normally, I seem to be out. I normally have another piece to put on here so that um, it, it's protected. Let me see if I have any more over here. Oh, I might. See, these tore out a lot thinner. I don't know. So, and then I close that off and we put it under a heavy book. Which I think all my heavy books are being used right now, so I'm going to have to find one in a minute. Now, this one is all done. Um, I've, I've glued the last of the pages just today, so there is still wax paper in here where pages are drying. But I also did a little bit of a spread. I decided to make this a beach themed book. I'm gonna get this out of here because it's got wet glue on it and I'll end up sticking something to it. So let me show you what I have collected to use in this book. So I have um, some cut aparts, some strips uh, that I might use um, in this book. There's this one sheet, uh, one pad of paper that's, um, it's beach, but it's like these darker images, which I kind of like. It's right here. Um, it just says like the deep blue sea just float. So refreshing, relax, feel the water around you. And it's got the wavy pattern in it and it's darker blue. And then there's these kind with the flowers. And then there's a few that have, I tore that one up for that other page. There's a few that have this that's supposed to be like the sunlight that you catch on a, on a, on film. I forget what that, it has a name and I forget what it's called. But I like this pier and it's like, ah, sitting on the dock at the lake, you know, water whirling, twirling around my feet, gazing into the great blue depths, you know, so I like that a lot. Um, that might be one that I use where I cut it off to fit on the page to make a full page background and then decorate it. Um, and then they have uh, like this kind of pattern. And there's um, an umbrella with that same sun glare on it. And I like this one with the bike. Sunny days, cool breezy nights, sunbathing, stargazing, summertime, which is also the phrases that I used in the front of the book, which I can show you in a minute. Um, so I found some coffee dyed uh, beach paper to use. I don't have digitals. So what I did was I went through and I pulled out all my beach themed, this is all beach themed scrapbook paper. Uh, and then there was this set. Um, it's double sided and it's a little heavier, so it might be used more for like pockets. Uh, but it, I liked the colors and it feels beachy to me. I don't know if it is. This is We Are, uh, we are Memory Keepers. Um, I thought it went really well with this paper, which had the suns on it. So, uh, and then I got some kind of shabby solid colored pages to use just to, um, you know, break things up that match. And then I got this one that's water, nice clear water with what looks like a sandy bottom. Uh, like, so very, very tropical because that's some very, very clear water. Oh, and that's just a collage masterboard I haven't worked on yet. Okay. 
So what I did was, and then I took the coffee dyed lighthouse and pier and I made this spread here. And here's that saying, like I said, sunny days, cool breezy nights, sunbathing, stargazing, and then this is summertime. So that's where we are here. Now, being that this is the first book done, um, I was still of the mindset that, you can see the tattered where I tore out the pages here. I was still of the mindset that these double pages were gonna get turned into pockets. But once I got some glued together, they're really thick. I don't know how many pockets I'll necessarily make out of the pages. It's not to say I won't, um, because this one, so I was leaving this because I was like, oh, those two will be a pocket. And then I did it again here. I left the tattered and these two will be a pocket. And that's how I did it. And then I decided, you know what? Um, I'm not going to do it that way. So I skipped a page. So this page is not glued to anything. It's a single page. And then I went and I decided, you know what? I'm going to pair them up so that I cover up all that torn stuff ahead of time so that I'm not locked into having to make pockets out of these thicker pages if I don't want to. So I kind of shifted. And then that's what I did with all the rest of the books was I covered this up as I was gluing pairs together rather than waiting. But since I didn't do that here, what I want to do is I want to make this one a full size pocket. So we're going to make this flip over and this will be a side tuck pocket. So let me get my punch and we will give it a thumb hole. Try and make it centered as best I can. And cut that out. There we go. I may need that again. I may not. Who knows? All right. So, and then what I'm going to do is, since that's going to get glued down, I'm going to ink the, I'm going to ink the thumb hole, just like that. All right. And now we are going to glue these pages like a pocket. So I finally refilled my glue, guys. This is like to the tippy top full. All right. So we all know how to glue a pocket, right? Just glue the sides you don't want open and it would be really nice if I could find my rag right about now. And of course you want to try and go down as thin as you can so that you get as much pocket as you can get. And then not that it really serves a purpose, but you can glue along this back just to add some reinforcement, I guess. I don't know that those will actually touch, but I stuck glue in there, so make myself feel better. Okay, and then what I'll do is I will lift this the way we were doing with the other pages, and we will go up like this. Close the book, squish the edges together. Without my rag, I'm just getting glue all over my fingers. And there we have it, a pocket. And now we have a two page spread to decorate. Now, if I was gonna cover this page with, um, if I was gonna cover this page with a single piece of paper, I probably should have done it before I cut the notch. And then over here, I have decided, this is my single page, and what I've decided to do is fold this down for reinforcement, and I will probably glue something on here, maybe even inside the pocket, like line this page inside here, so that when it is inside the pocket and something slides down in there, it doesn't hurt this, so to speak. Um, oh, this is the, I'm sorry, this is the inside of the pocket. So it'll go down like that. Glued there. So we have to figure out how we, and then what I did was I took this and I folded it over and I drew a line. So what I'm probably going to do is rather than fold this because it's two pages glued together is I'm probably going to cut along that line. <sighs> 
and then glue that down as a pocket. Because again, we have, this is where I made the transition from leaving these and not leaving these. Okay, let me get, I have like spare cutting mats around here. Oops, not there, here. I have a spare, like tuck it in a book cutting mat, like that. Let's see if I can do this. We're gonna line this ruler up. I might have to do it this way. We're gonna line this ruler up like this and we're gonna pray that we can cut this off like this. All right, for the most part, that worked. I just have a little bit at the top that I'm gonna have to clean up. So there we go. Now these are lined up and they open correctly and I'm gonna cut this. And there we go. Awesome. Now, I don't wanna make the same mistake I made here and I might, it might, I might not call it a mistake. I might just call it a happy accident and we may end up trying to do this anyway because I really wanna try I made some measurements. I really want to try gluing down a background sheet because what I'm doing is in this book, what we're going to do is we're going to go through choosing papers. This is kind of like putting pages in a journal. We're going to go through choosing papers to cover the pages with, make our pockets, do whatever, and then we'll come back and decorate when it's all done. And that way I can have the papers out, do the pages, then we can do uh, decorating and then, um, I can have ephemera and stuff out to do that. Um, because it's, you know, only so much space guys, only so much space. All right. So let me see what we might want to work with here and go all the way back to that pad and we can do this cut off like I wanted to. Might have to cut it down a little lower. I don't need the whole dock to give the idea of the dock, but I do want most of the words. So, I think we are gonna do that. I know it seems like I'm doing very, very dark beach. Hopefully we'll be able to remedy that. All right, now what I want to do is I've made my measurements and I know that wide, I want the pages to be five and five eighths wide. So what I'm going to do is, this is the way I normally do this. I make a mark at five and five eighths because measuring eighths on here is a pain because I have to get down the big long ruler. Um, so while I do like this, it does have its limits. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to measure five and five eighths and I'm going to make a mark on the page. So we go, if I can get my ruler to cooperate. So we go like this and we lay it down and we say, okay, I need to be right. This is four eighths. This is five eighths. I need to be right here. Then what I do is I take that little dot, I know this seems like a lot of work, and I line it up. I make sure that my straight edge on my scrapbook paper is straight, and then I line this up on one of the measurement lines, and I cut it. Now my ruler is 12 inches, so this gets a little tricky, but it will work. My ruler is actually just slightly bigger than 12 inches. Okay, so I want to line it up right on the 17, a little over there and a little over here, and that gives me my straight connection. See, this is where all my, my brain processing comes in. This is why I like working with kind of a process. I, that's just the way my, my brain works. Okay, now I do want to take off, I don't think I'm gonna keep the ah at the top. The ah at the bottom is going to end up staying just by the nature of the page. 
And that will also get rid of my perforated edge because... So we're going to take off an inch at the top before we measure off where we want to cut for the, um, the dock. Because I know I want to remove this. Uh. Okay, so that takes that off. And I can use that somewhere else. I just don't want to use it here. Okay, so that takes that off. Now, I know that I need my page length to be five and seven, uh, no, sorry, eight and seven eighths. So I'm going to lay this down. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna do it on the back because I'm gonna be end, I'm gonna end up marking in that black pier, which will make it really, really difficult to see. So we're gonna cut this backwards. Make sure I'm cutting on the dock side and not on the letter side. So dock's down here. And we're gonna go eight and seven eighths right there all right and then we're going to do the same thing i'm going to take this and i'm going to line it up one align make sure everything is straight along this bottom edge so that i get a straight cut and then i'm going to cut right along this line it gives me something to line up with without actually having to draw a line on my paper. And I know there's tons of people out there who are looking at me going, that is way too much work. Just glue it in and cut it off or glue it in and tear it off or, you know, whatever. But like I said, guys, that's the way my brain works. It's a little weird. Okay, now I'm going to ink the edges that aren't black. Uh, it's not, um, it's not making a huge difference. The thing I like about this paper is this is not cardstock. I mean, you can hear it. Although I will say that no matter what you cut on video, it all sounds thick. So I don't know if you can tell, but this is not a cardstock. This is a paper. So putting this on top of those really thick pages doesn't, doesn't add a ton of bulk. I'm trying not to add too, too much bulk with the background pages um, just because, you know, we don't want the book to be overly thick, right? All right, let me see. Ooh. Yeah, that works out nice. So I got a nice frame there. I love that. Okay, down it goes. And we're just going to use our, this is Fabri-Tac in this Sugar Bell bottle. I think it's um, so far my favorite. I do have some art glitter glue, which I'm going to admit, guys, I bought it and I've been using this Fabri-Tac and I haven't tried the art glitter glue. I probably should just to see how, if, if I like it, if I like it better, if, you know. Now, um, the other thing about my, talking about my brain all the time, because it's all out there, the other thing about how my brain works when it looks at these is it does look at them as two page spreads. So, um, and I think that has to do with my scrapbooking. Uh, because whenever I would do scrapbooking, my, my, my spreads had to match, you know what I mean? So let's get the bone folder out. Ooh. Make sure we got this corner up here. Right along that edge, right along this edge. Oh, I got glue on the front. Down this edge, across this edge. That's how I got glue on the front. Because I can't find my rag. And we're going to kind of I really like that. I really, 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 really like that. 
So that is going to be the back side of this pocket. Now, um, you know, this might get a flip or who knows. Now, now that I've glued this down, I got to decide how I'm going to cover this, guys, because I don't know if I should. Um, I have these strips. But if I do the strips, I got, I mean, I got to do something the rest of the page, right? Mm, excuse me. Ugh, indigestion or something. Maybe I could bring in some of that blue flower paper. See, now, what I will say is these dark backgrounds, I could just find the blue flower paper. These dark backgrounds will end up being um, a place where I will put, like, I will top them with lighter colored. Ah, here we go. This, maybe? Let me get this off here. And then what we're going to do, we may end up doing another one of these things where I, I, I think I will cover the page. And then I'll just have to get that to clip again. We'll do it. It'll work. We'll get it. Um, and maybe we'll use the lighter side of the page. I might not even use any of the black border. So let's trim. I'm going to shut that for a minute and we're going to do some trimming here. Um, so I'm going to trim off. I'm going to trim off. I'm actually going to trim off all the way over to where I want because I want to get into this lighter section. So I'm going to trim off all the way over to there so that I can get the page started in the lighter section. So we're going to cut off about two inches. And um, I will put it in the pile of strips and use it for something. All right. Um, and then I'm going to do the same thing. Actually, what I'm going to do is figure out my... Where is it? So this is my 5 and 7 eighths direction, I think. Do we want to go 5 and 7 eighths? Which way do we want to go with this? Oh, stop standing there staring at the paper. You know what? I'm going to take an inch off this side, or maybe half an inch off this side. And we're going to go up and down so we get like a variation in the color. Because I think if I go this way... Actually, no. You know what? I like that spot. Let's do that. All right, I'm going to cut this off. Because I know I don't want this. Um, let's cut it off at about right there. Gives me enough to play with, but also takes enough off the page. Okay. And then we're going to do the five and seven eighths this way. So let's go... this way. So let's go like this. Put down our mark. One, two, three, four, five, and oh, five and five eighths. That was an almost disaster, guys. Five and four eighths, five and five eighths. Not really. I would have cut it too big, in which case I could have just trimmed it. So not really an almost disaster. All right, now slide it down on our dot. Make sure our dots on a line. Move that right along there and cut on that line. All right. Now we just look at this and we say, okay, I want the page to go that way, so we're going to cut it from this direction, 8 and 7 eighths. Eight. Eight. 
too many lines on this ruler. Eight and seven eighths. Okay, now line it up. So what is everybody working on? I have decided to stay away from seasonal right now until I get my channel up and going and I have kind of a rhythm and I can do stuff on time and you know, like that. Um, Cause right now I'm like all over the place in a mess. But uh, what are people working on? Are you working on seasonal stuff? Are you working on not seasonal stuff? Did I cut this page too big? Uh, actually, because of this fold, it's slightly too big. So we're going to trim about... Um, and I guess if I laid it... See, the problem is, is gluing it down flat on there, and when I fold it, it'll just peel until it's dry. So it might be easier to just trim like a little bit off the edge. I don't want, not a lot. Just enough so it's not going over that natural, that fold in the book. So can you, you can see that where the page folds over the, where the cover folds and all that. Because we're at the beginning of the book, that's a really sharp fold and I don't want to fold on there. So we're just going to take this and we're going to put it on here like this. Yeah. I like it. All right, let's ink. This should ink pretty good. And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and cut that notch and we'll have our pocket and... It'll be good. So, like I said, you guys gotta, you know, let me know what you're working on when you see this video. Uh, I'll just say I don't have like a stockpile of digitals. I, I haven't been doing junk journaling for a ton of time. So, um, and so I don't have like, I haven't gone online and bought like a ton of digitals or anything because I have a ton of scrapbook paper. And my thought was, use what you got first. So, um, I've been going through trying to find some themes that will work with the scrapbook paper that I have. And I have a ton of beach scrapbook paper. Because we used to be at the beach all the time. Like, all the time. And we're not so much anymore, but... It's still, I gathered a ton of scrapbook paper. And um, I still like the beach. So I figured, what the heck, we'll make an altered book with all this beachy, summery scrapbook paper stuff that I have. Okay, let's glue this down. And I have to be careful not to glue the pocket shut as well. So that's a what we're going to do. We're going to glue I guess you just glue on the page. Because I mean if I glue it down and anything is sticking up because I miss or I don't go far enough over I can always just squeeze a little glue underneath of it later. But rather that than glue my pocket shut. This is nice because this is a nice stiff surface to glue on. I'm not worried about poking a hole in the page as I go over it with my glue bottle. I don't know that that's something I ever actually worried about. I'm just commenting. Uh, let's go this way. And not more at the top than the bottom, showing, hopefully, like that. And we'll go down along there, and down along here, and smooshy smooshy. I definitely want this down really well. And then I want the edges 
So let's make sure my pocket still opens. And it does. Let's smoosh away from the opening. And away from the opening there. And down. All right. Now, we're going to see how good I am with a punch. Did I just glue that shut anyway? I think I did. I did. Right there. All right. Okay, well. All right. Let me get my punch back out and we'll see how good I am at getting this skinny little piece in here and lining this up properly. Yay, we did it. All right. I'm swapping pages, guys. Oh, no. These pockets I had set up and made. Yeah, gotta... All right. Okay, now let me see if we can't ink the thumbhole spot. And there we have it, guys. Um, as far as the pages go, I will probably ink them as I decorate the edges of the pages because I'll, I'll more than likely ink them. Okay, so where are we at this point? Let me look. Well, we should probably end it there. So I had this spread done that I've tried off camera. Actually, if I want to tell you a little secret, I did it on camera, but I didn't adjust my focus and the whole thing was a mess. So uh, I had to refilm this. So this I did on camera once and then I had to delete it. Um, and then I came back and this is what we've done. So I've got these pages down here. I really like how this turned out. I'm um, enjoying how this book is going. We have a pocket in and we have plans for another set of pockets here. So I think what I will do is figure out what paper I'm gonna put on this pocket first. We, we're not going to make the same mistake again. Uh, cover the pocket and then glue the pockets closed. So, you know what I'm going to do real quick though while I've got you here? Not that I, you need to see this. But I'm going to put my wax paper down and we're going to Mod Podge this little piece down and get that taken care of. I'm going to end up having to throw this foam pad, away, this foam thing away. I've been using a ton of Mod Podge, guys. I have like several bottles of it. So I was like, oh, I'm never going to run out of this. And I'm looking how fast I'm going through it. And I'm like, wow, once I start using it for stuff, it goes pretty quick. All right. I just want to have this down so that the next time I'm working in here, I don't have to worry about. I want this to be flat. So I'm going to go ahead and glue it down and get it. Um, under the heavy book and all of that so that we are ready to go next time without any issues. All right, now this is going back under its heavy book. Not that this stage really needs that, but you know, it never hurts. And um, we'll do another spread later hopefully in the next one there won't be any processing i won't show you uh, i've shown you my process for gluing and getting the books ready to go um, i won't be probably doing that on camera again unless somebody wants to see it again um which you know I, that's fine i will uh but from here on out i think we're going to i'll select papers to work with and we'll do a couple spreads and then we'll move through the book like that and then we'll come back and decorate and see how we do. Um, so I'm glad you guys joined me again and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye guys.